Up next is Stefano Chiarici, security researcher from Sysdig, talking about the main limitations in PSP and explaining how Open Policy Agent is a better overall solution capable of providing security controls to all the components in your Kubernetes environment. Hey everyone, thanks for joining. Today we are gonna, we are, we are gonna say goodbye to PSP and we see how to migrate your PSP rules to OPA. Uh, during the talk, we are going to briefly talk about PSP and its limitation and we are going to move then to OPA. Uh, I'm going to present a new version of, of uh, the existing tool, Cube uh, PSP Advisor, renamed now Cube uh, Policy Advisor. And the tool uh, was previously created to generate PSP from live Kubernetes environments and from files. And the tool has been announced and it can now uh, generate also OPA policies, uh, always starting from your uh, live environments and files. Uh, in this way, uh, you can easily migrate from PSP to OPA and generate your new uh, OPA, policy, OPA policies from your environments. And I am also going to, uh, to do a quick demo about the tool as well, but let's uh, proceed step by step. And um, let's start introducing myself. I am Stefano and I am a security researcher in SysDig. I uh, don't know if you can recognize the monument in the picture, but this is the Duomo in Milano, Italy, and this is, uh, this is the city where I live and I come from. I'm also part of the FICO community and I'm a FICO contributor, which for who doesn't know FICO is an open source of time security tool. Um, let's start uh, um, with something we perhaps already know, but just for the sake of argument, let's talk about why we use and we need uh, pod security in place for our environments. Uh, as you all know, and I hope we can all agree, uh, security is now a mandatory aspect we need to care about. Uh, in, in most of Kubernetes clusters, airbox or so, uh, role-based access control rules uh, control access to these uh, resources and list, get, create, edit, and delete um, are the sort of API uh, operation that airbox supports and cares about. However, airbox doesn't consider what settings are being put into the resources it controls. So it doesn't provide the ability to control or settings, uh, content or uh, configuration of, uh, of cluster objects. For example, you may want to allow users in a database group uh, to create and edit deployments in the database namespace, but any pod containers in that namespace shouldn't really run as, um, as, as root user. And that could be something we may want to control and avoid. Um, so to cover uh, uh, the part that Buck is missing, PSP uh, was uh, introduced. And PSP is a cluster level uh, resource that allows a cluster administrator to control uh, security sensitive aspects of the pod uh, specification. Um, a pod security policy object uh, basically defines a set of conditions a pod must meet in order to be allowed into the cluster. Uh, it's implemented as a built-in admission controller, uh, which enforced security policies on pods across the clusters. Uh, PSP uh, is helping us to prevent uh, insecure pods are deployed in our environments or restrict the users and the group IDs or uh, of the containers or restrict the usage of the host file system to be sure that what is deployed um, is basically following certain uh, security boundaries uh, we define and force the usage of uh, security best practices. Uh, so applying uh, those security boundaries, we can basically reduce uh, our attack surface and uh, secure Kubernetes pods uh, in the runtime stage as well. Uh, so we know uh, security must be in place and PSP, as we've, as we've said, is pretty useful for, uh, for those purposes. Uh, let's have also a brief look now at, the, at how uh, PSP works. 
Um, Post-security policies are implemented by a set of uh, Kubernetes resources like um, service account deployments, uh, replica sets, or components like uh, post-security policy admission controller and also other controllers all working together uh, to assure uh, what the pods are created within strict security uh, assumptions. Uh, it's worth noting that post security policy admission controller must be explicitly enabled. At the same time, uh, the related post security policies must be created and deployed. Otherwise, uh, the admission controller uh, will prevent any pods from being uh, created in the cluster, and that could be uh, actually a big problem for us. Uh, so uh, the recommended uh, deployment sequence should be uh, deploying uh, the policies for the environment and then enabling the admission controller. Uh, when you submit a pod, either a user or a service account uh, must have the permission to use at least one policy. And the permission to use it uh, is gained by uh, binding the identity to a role that allows the, uh, the user the, of the PSP. And once a PSP is selected, uh, the admission controller plugin validates the pod definition against it. Uh, if the pod conforms to the cluster's policies, uh, it, uh, it is accepted and stored in a, a, a ETCD. Otherwise, it rejects immediately. So here, in a nutshell, is how uh, PSP works uh, once uh, deployed in the uh, in, uh, in environment. Uh, so we have seen uh, what is PSP and how it works, and uh, you may have already got some of its limitations. Uh, so PSP has different limitations, and that's why Kubernetes 121 uh, started the deprecation process for a post security policy. And it will be fully functional for other several uh, more releases. And the plan is to remove PSP from Kubernetes 125 release. Here are uh, reported some of the PSP limitations. So first of all, uh, it, it works just with some pod fields. So we, uh, uh, we can enforce just a selected subset of fields uh, in the pod spe uh, specification and there is no way for a user to extend or cover any missing fields or areas we, uh, he wants to, uh, to control. Of course, it could be uh, done by using your own uh, admission controller or using external admission controllers available, but not directly inside PSP. Uh, in addition, it works just with pods, but uh, you can't enforce security settings uh, in all the Kubernetes resources. And that's uh, another big deal since we may uh, want something more flexible. Uh, another problem is what we have also discussed before. Uh, you can't set the enable by default option. So users need to add uh, policies for all the workloads before actually enabling the feature. Uh, so before activating PSP, uh, you need to audit every single workload and understand all of your requirements and create policies that, that match all of them in one go to be sure to allow what, what you need. And also uh, the lack of auditing functionality makes the PSP rollout in existing cluster even more uh, complicated. Uh, you can't also apply two policies and that like the union of those policies. In fact, just one policy has, uh, has to authorize the pod. And in case you have two policies applied to a pod, there is no good way actually to uh, prioritize uh, which one should be applied, but it just goes uh, alphabetically. And that's something uh, we don't really want, honestly. Um, another problem we have briefly uh, talked before when PSP resource is created, it basically does nothing. Uh, in order to use it, the requesting users uh, or target pods uh, service account must be authorized to use the policy uh, by allowing the specific use verb. Uh, however, usually we see uh, pods created indirectly as part of a, a deployment or replica set or other uh, template controller. But we have, uh, we have all run into the scenario where the user uh, asks permission to use the PSP to deploy a pod, 
but what happens when uh, they are created uh, uh, a, a deployment instead? In this case, uh, uh, the deployment and the resulting replica set get created, but the pods uh, won't be created since the replica set is not authorized to use uh, the PSP. Uh, and and uh, in addition, the error generated due to this issue might be confusing, especially for the new users and that and that makes debugging yeah, yeah, even more uh, tricky. So having presented all or some of the most annoying limitations, we can actually agree uh, that we can say goodbye to PSP has been an honor and we can start uh, looking at something else. The problem now um, is that the decision uh, to deprecate PSP could leave many users at risk uh, of being exposed to various exploits and adversaries uh, may utilize the lack of such policies to run privileged pods, create pods on host namespace or on network and, and, and much more. So uh, we need to find as soon as possible something to replace it and ideally even something more flexible to use and something that could better match all the possible use case we need. Um, so let's see if OPA could be the answer to our problems then. Uh, the open, uh, open Policy Agent is an open source general purpose policy engine that, that uh, unifies policy enforcement across the stack. OPA provides a high level uh, declarative language called Rigo that lets you specify policies as code. And we are going to see an example of Rigo policy and we are also going to see uh, to see Rigo in action in our uh, demo later on today. Uh, OPA is also pretty flexible and you can use OPA uh, to enforce policies in microservices, Kubernetes, uh, CICD, pipelines, API gateways, and even more. So one of the main advantages of OPA is that lets you uh, decouple policies uh, from, the soft, so from the software service so that people uh, responsible for policy can read, write, analyze, and in general manage policies uh, separate from the, uh, the service itself. And as far as pod security goes, instead OPA is actually um, way more flexible. So you can check all the fields in a pod configuration and also um, it could be applied to any um, Kubernetes resources so we can cover all of them. Uh, the, uh, in, in addition, it's, the, it's deployed as an external uh, admission controller and it could be customized by users to cover all the areas and all the, 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 news, the, uh, the use cases uh, it needs. Uh, we can see here how OPA works and it's deployed. So as we've said before, OPA interacts with API call uh, to create, modify and delete a resource. Uh, the API service sends the entire uh, Kubernetes object in the webhook request to OPA, and OPA evaluates the policies it has loaded in, uh, using the admission review as input. Um, the policies you give to OPA generate an admission review response that is sent back uh, to the API server. So even in this case, if the Kubernetes resource may, uh, meet the requirements set in the, in the OPA policy, it is allowed. Otherwise, uh, it's, it's denied, and that's usually what happened in, a, uh, in admission controllers in general. Uh, here is an example of, of OPA policy for admission review. Uh, OPA used the RIGO, which is a general purpose uh, declarative uh, logic programming language, uh, to define policies. And we can see uh, the deny method checking the security context dot privileged value. So when a, a resource is deployed, in this case, a pod and the value privileged is equal to true, the policy will block the deployment since we are saying here uh, what to deny. But it depends, of course, on the default action defined in the admission controller deployed in your environment. Uh, Rigo works as a series of end, and as we can see here, you can also uh, do the or logic operator just the redefining the same method and changing the uh, the condition inside. 
uh, in this way, OPA is going to evaluate both uh, and, proceed in, and proceed in case just one is true. Uh, so Rego is quite a complete and complex language where you can also define sets of sets and work with sets in different ways. And I suggest uh, all of you interested in OPA to have a look uh, at the language documentation and start playing with it. Uh, policies. Uh, can be loaded uh, in, into OPA uh, dynamically via config map um, using the, the cube management uh, sidecar container, and it can also load uh, any other Kubernetes object into OPA as JSON uh, under data. Uh, so OPA is great, and it seems a good step forward, but now the problem is, how can I start actually with OPA uh, in uh, uh, with my environment, or in case I'm already using OPA, how can I migrate all I have done in PSP um, to OPA without uh, restarting the analysis or collecting requirement and so on, which might be a super uh, long activities and perhaps even already done before. Uh, so since we are here to give answers to problems, um, Q Policy Advisor is basically the answer to all our problems to migrate what we have in PSP to OPA or just start with OPA as new. Um, Q Policy Advisor uh, is an update of the previous version uh, of the tool named Q PSP Advisor, which was able to create uh, the PSP policies from either a live Kubernetes environment or from a file or from a single EAP file uh, containing a, a pod specification. Uh, with this new version, we also support OPA, and that's why we actually need to rename the tool since it's not just uh, related to uh, PSP anymore. Uh, it's now possible to create also uh, OPA, po OPA policies from either a live Kubernetes environment or from a single file, uh, supporting now also workloads, so deployments, demo set, and not just pods. Uh, the main idea was replicating uh, what PSP is doing, providing the same level of security on, on the fields used by PSP. And from there, you can add uh, on top or even merging your own uh, custom policies. Uh, let's see now how we can uh, actually use uh, the, the, the tool Cube Policy Advisor and what we can do with that. Uh, it has two main subcommands, um, inspect and convert. Uh, here is how to use both of them. And with the command inspect, it, it connects to a Kubernetes API server, uh, scans the security context of the workloads, and in a in a given also in a in a um, in a specific namespace or in an or in an entire cluster and generates a, a, a PSP or an OPA policy based on the security context. Uh, the subcommand convert works instead without connecting to an API server, uh, but it's just reading a single YAML file uh, containing an, an object and generates a PSP or OPA policy based on the, on the file submitted. Uh, for both the subcommand using the flag policy, uh, you can define what type of policies you prefer, if PSP or OPA. Um, the default right now is OPA since PSP is already in the deprecation process. So uh, if you don't define uh, the flag policy, the tool is going to provide uh, directly the OPA policy. Uh, with the OPA version, since OPA could be configured with deny by default or allow by default, it's also possible to set the option uh, and set the flag deny by default to get the related OPA policies configured for the uh, deny by default admission controller uh, deployment. Uh, let's start now uh, the demo, and we are going to see how uh, to use Kubernetes Policy Advisor generate uh, to generate uh, OPA policies for pods and deployments, e uh, either using the live Kubernetes environments or uh, EM files. Uh, we're also going to deploy the policies generated in a, in a testing environment to see how OPA works uh, with the Kubernetes con um, admission controller in place. So uh, 
Um, let's start with the demo and we can see uh, the Kubernetes environment up and, and working and we can check the uh, namespace available. In this case, we can see there is OPA deployed in the cluster. And before to start, let's have a look at the config files applied in this deployment. So first of all, admission controller, where is defined the actions of the admission controller. We can see the config map applied. In this case, we have enabled, uh, or enabled by default, and we can see here the response set for the admission controller. In, in case in your, in your environment, you have the option denied by default, you can use, as, as we said, the flag uh, in the tool denied by default, and the tool is going to provide uh, the, the, uh, the policy for this environment. Let's have a look at the webhook configuration. And uh, so OPA will work with create and update, and also with, with the, the reported uh, resources here. So we said before OPA can work with the, uh, all the Kubernetes resources anyway. We can see the, the logs from OPA and we can see that it's deployed and it's, it's healthy. So uh, let's start with our demo. And for the first case, use case, we want to create an OPA policy for the resources in the namespace demo. So uh, in this case, we have, um, uh, we have one pod deployed and running. And let's, uh, let's have a look also at the YAM files and see the security boundaries applied. Um, so we can see this is a deployment and here is the, uh, um, the security context uh, we set in this case for this, for, for this pod, for this deployment, sorry. Let's start with our tool. So let's run to policy advisor and we can see uh, the available commands. We can have, uh, as we said, uh, we are going to use uh, the two main commands so convert and inspect. Let's start with inspect in this case and we inspect the demo uh, namespace uh, we, and we print uh, the output to a policy, uh, to a file policy.rigo. Uh, let's have a look uh, now at the uh, policy generated. We can see uh, the main method uh, value uh, workload set context where all the uh, other methods che uh, checking the values for uh, um, drop, it, uh, drop it cap or uh, user ID or group ID and, and in, in the meet there are the, the value uh, to check. So let's now create the, the config map with the policy generated. Uh, in this case, we call it the demo uh, policy and let's have, uh, let's have a look if the policy is fine and we can see um, using the describe, so describe config map and we can see the policy is applied and um, the status is, is okay. So the policy um, is, is, is working. Uh, let's see now. Uh, another YAM file um, regarding a pod we are going to use to see the admission controller response with the policy in place. And we can see the pod with different security contests and different values. So let's now submit the pod and, and let's see what happened with the admission controller. In this case, we can see the admission controller rejected the deploy since uh, it's not compliant with the policy. And we can try to apply instead the web app deployment, and uh, as we have seen before, and we can see uh, that in this case um, the policy is uh, is accepted, and 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 the policy is configured, and the the pod configured. So uh, this was the first case where the policy is generated by the tool using a live environment. Um, let's now uh, generate a policy using a uh, YAM file instead. So and in this case, let's use the, uh, the convert and let's, let's print the file into the policy dot, uh, policy tool.rego as output file. Uh, so the policy has been generated and as we have done before, uh, let's have a look at the, uh, at the policy generated. And, and in, in this case, let's just uh, copy, uh, let's just open the file and just formatting uh, the, the output to better read. So in, even in this case, we have all the, all the methods to check the security context supports, UIDs and so on. Um, also, in, as we have done before, so we can create another config map 
in the environment. And as, as before, let's check uh, also the, um, the status to see if there are errors in the policy generated or it has been applied um, and, 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 it's, and it's working. So let's do the describe uh, as we've done before. And we can see the policy is okay, so the status is okay, so that's that's fine. Um, let's delete uh, the the policy we created before just for the test, and we can now apply uh, the pod in our environment and see uh, what happened with the initial controller. In this case, the pod uh, it accepted, uh, so that's. Um, it has been accepted. So we try now with let's try now with the diff, with the with the deployment we have, we have used before. There is totally different, and we can see uh, that it was actually denied from the from the mission controller since we removed uh, the previous uh, policy from from OPA. So we can now reapply uh, both uh, the policy and have both policy applied in our environment. And we can see that uh, now even the uh, the deployment is accepted correctly. So uh, just to recap what we have seen uh, during during this demo, uh, we uh, we generated two policies uh, with the Cube Policy Advisor. And in the first case, uh, in we we used a live environment to get all the information from. Uh, uh, from our from uh, our Kubernetes environment, and and then in the second case we generated a, a policy from a YAM file, and and we also have a look at the policy and the policy created. So uh, here was a quick demo about the the tool, um, the Cube Policy Advisor. And here is the, the link, the, the GitHub link, where you can find all the information regarding the tool. And in here, there are also um, all the information for to reach me out. So I suggest all of you to try it and try it out. And, and please um, send me your feedback or um, contact me in, in all uh, with Twitter or Slack. I'm also in a Kubernetes Slack. Uh, reach me out to with feedback or any information or ideas to enhance the tool even even more. So thanks everyone for joining, and I wish you a, a great rest of the day. Bye. Thanks to Microsoft Azure and Equinix Metal for supporting us at the champion level. We also want to thank Red Hat and Slim.ai for funding us at our supporter level.